What makes an edit feel right? So many things. Um, I think it's the it's the shots feel right from one to the other. It's the sequences right next to each other. It's the scenes right next to each other. It's this, to make the acts and the acts feel right together. It's you know it's the the very minute feeling right impacts the overall feeling right. And so you can't get as an editor you can't get too um, particular and specific with something like it just demands so much attention uh, because what you do in the in the shot to shot the frame trimmings matters from the meta standpoint as well and so for me it comes down to um, tone and rhythm like that's what makes that's what makes an edit feel right does this tonally feel right emotionally feel right does this rhythmic rhythmically and um, you know, editorially, or does the pace feel right? And so those are the two things that I'm always focused on when I'm cutting or if I'm giving notes to my other editors. It's like the tone and the pace, the tone and the rhythm, like those things have to be right. If those things feel right, it'll feel right when you zoom out. And maybe I heard you say this in your prior Film Riot interviews, but you said you don't like to use like a regular dissolve. You like to find different little workarounds that just, it kind of ties it through just a little bit smoother. Yeah, I mean, sometimes you can do a quick dissolve and it's fine. But for me, it's like, I feel like every film demands a different aesthetic approach to something. Sometimes you can use an out-of-the-box transition or um, the quick and easy one. But then also there's times where you can accentuate this, this transition, whether it's you know a hard cut, a dissolve, a flash cut, doing overlays, these different things. Like use something that tonally feels right in the moment. I don't really know how to, you really, you should like, this just feels right, I'm gonna do this. And it could change, but it's just like, in the moment, I feel like this is what I want. Like, as a viewer, as an audience, as the second audience, I feel like this is what I want. So me, as the first audience, I'm gonna do it. How important are your own emotions and feelings when you edit, when you're sitting down looking at this footage, whether it's the first pass, second? I mean, I, I think it, they're, they are important and then they're not important. I think they're very important because you're experiencing a scene for the first time. So it's got to move you as an editor. It's got to move you as a viewer, more importantly. So you're always keeping in mind that second audience that's coming behind you to watch it. And I want to polish a moment to be as powerful and as information and emotion rich as it possibly can. And so if me, especially if I've seen a scene 300 times and I still have an emotional reaction to it, I'm like we're onto something good, like this is good. Um, and so I can't let my emotions get in the way though so that I start to taint or hide things from the second audience or um, water things down for the second audience. You know, having faith and trust in you know, their content, their ability to watch something and to understand it and then to also feel it, the right feelings that they should feel in this moment. And so for me, it's my emotions matter as long as I'm keeping the audience in mind then my emotions matter. If I'm being selfish and only focused on my specific emotions and I'm not thinking about the audience, that's when my emotions can kind of start to get in the way of the film becoming what I think the film should be. It goes against a lot of what Rick Rubin is saying now, but in filmmaking, I feel like it's so important to keep that audience and the experience that that audience is gonna have. Right, because isn't it, sorry, no. isn't it your job to sort of stay detached? Yeah, it's your job to stay detached from I don't know. Is it my job to stay detached? Detached from what? Well, just because, you know, you're bringing sort of this thing to life, but it's already sort of a director's vision or screenwriter's, yeah. you know, collaboration, producer and the actors or whatever. And, and so you're sort of just putting the moving parts together. You are in scripted a lot more than, than in documentary. And you are putting the parts together, but in doc, and this is one of the reasons I love doc so much, is that there's so much more on my plate um, so much more that is demanded of me as an editor to bring much more and that's why a lot of um, documentary editors are getting credited with writing credit on those films like there's just there's just something different in in the there's something different that a doc editor has the role that they have to play than the scripted and so for me it is detachment but um, it's also like severe attachment and like really fighting for the content alongside the director and fighting is kind of kind of necessitates an adversary, like something you're fighting against, but it's not always like that. But you always feel like you're fighting for the film to be the best that it can be. 
and I don't know exactly what you're fighting against, but you're like in the trenches, you're like, we're gonna make this thing, this is gonna be great. And so there's a, there's a level of detachment, but then there's a level of attachment. And it's, you know, shoulder, arm in arm, shoulder to shoulder with the director to like bring this thing like out of the, out of the fog and like into the light. Yeah, I think you said previously that it, it's kind of magic when you can, quote, discover the character, not just see it created. Like, it, you feel like it's a real person. Yeah, yeah. Discovery is, I, for me, like, the process of making a film feels very discovering. And you're going back and forth with the director, and you're cutting, and you're refining. And then all of a sudden, there's just, like, this beautiful scene there. And you're just like, where did this come from? It's like, I don't know. I don't remember making that. Did you make that? No, I don't know who made that. Like, where did this come from? You're like, you're constantly discovering what the film is. You're discovering different scenes. They're coming together and falling together. And it's like, it's really fun, especially when you get on a momentum and it's just like scene after scene after scene after scene. And all of a sudden you step back and you're like, yo, we got 20 minutes. Like, this is crazy. Like, we can watch it. It's feeling really good. And so that, I like to keep that, that emotion of discovery, that feeling of discovery, the sense of discovery alive as much as we can because that's when filmmaking, for me, in post, and specifically in doc, is like really fun. How do you find the emotional truth of a story? That, I, I feel like the emotional truth of a story it, uh, makes itself known throughout the whole process. Like, I definitely don't need to know the emotional truth of a story to start cutting the story. I feel like it, it kind of uncovers itself as you make your way through, which kind of is one of the reasons why I like to send in 15 minute chunks. It's to get the director and I talking about actual scenes and how they are feeling in, in relationship to each other. Um, so for me, it's kind of a continual discovery process. And what you find that, uh, that, you know, that emotional tone identity of the film, you can start to go back and refine some of the earlier scenes to fall in line with what you're discovering later on in the film. And so it's, it's, a, process that it, it's, it's a process that is ongoing throughout the whole film you are constantly going back and reworking scenes, not, not you know, tectonically reworking scenes, but looking for ways and opportunities to bring to light the emotional identity and tone of the film and earlier scenes that you cut eight months ago with the ones you cut now, because now you've understood, you, you understand more of what this film is. You can go back and identify, those, those things will be there. You can identify them and now you can like kind of uncover them and brush them off and bring them more to the surface. So for me, it happens throughout. It happens continuously, it happens in collaboration with the director, and it's always the willingness to go back to earlier scenes and just retool them a little bit in light of what you've discovered further on down the line. Why do you like directors who can give notes, let's say highlighting emotions maybe a character or a scene should be? Yeah, the directors that can identify what they want something to feel like is great. Like, those are great notes. Like, you know, there's a time and a place to get down in the weeds, and that's way later. Like, when we're talking about frame trims, that's down the line. But for me, when a director can give those more high-level, tonal, emotional, this is what I want to feel notes, I'm like, I can, I, I can execute on that. If you're just telling me what to do, I'm like, but what do you want to feel? Like, let me bring what I bring to the table. Like, I want to feel, I want to feel, um, like a sense of loss for this character. I want to feel a sense of dread in this moment. It's like, I can work with that. Like, that's great. Like, let me go back to the kitchen and cook something up with that. Um, so for me, having directors that can give those high level, um, ethereal, some would say, some editors get frustrated with those kinds of notes. But for me, I'm like, tell me what you want to feel and then let me take a pass at it. And then we can refine and actually get into the editing process. But like, let me put the proper clay on the table and then let's come back. And how do you actually insert those notes in the timeline? Is there a process that'll pop up at this minute, you know, sad or whatever? Yeah, there's, there are some things. A lot of them are conversations and just like on the phone, um, you know, texting, whatever, having that open dialogue throughout the process. But then we use Frame.io a lot, which does sync with the timeline. And so the director can like go in there and drop in a frame, a time code specific note on frame, and it'll pop up on our timeline. And so some of them are specific notes, like, hey, I'm thinking this here, but some of them are just like, hey, right here is where I think the tone should start to shift and like move into this area. And so there's a couple different processes. Honestly, when we're talking about that more emotional, high level, abstract notes like that, those are often discussed over calls or in person or text, stuff like that. Um, usually frame comes in handy when you kind of get into the nitty gritty. 
Uh, so it's, it's just a lot of conversations, a lot of dialogue, it's a lot of back and forth to identify. Because sometimes they want an emotion, I'm like, I don't think, like, I don't think so. Because in five minutes we're going to get there. But this is like setting there up. So like let this be this and then we'll go there later. So, you know, you know, having that dialogue to push back on each other and to make the best thing together is, is ideal.